Brothers and sisters in the Lord, today I speak to you about the final hours in the life of a great man of faith, John Paul II, who left an indelible mark in the history of the church and the whole world. This man, chosen by God to lead his church as the successor of the Apostle Peter, showed us an extraordinary example in the most difficult hours of his life, an example that we must keep in mind and that should inspire us in the hardest moments of our lives. John Paul II, aware that the time of his transition to eternity was approaching, made a courageous decision. In agreement with his doctors, he chose to remain in his residence in Rome rather than going to the hospital. He wished to suffer and die in his beloved home, near the tomb of the Apostle Peter, demonstrating his total trust in the will of God, accepting his will without hesitation. On the last day of his earthly life, a Saturday, John Paul II bade farewell to his close collaborators in the Roman Curia. Despite high fever and extreme weakness, he continued to pray at his bedside. In the afternoon, at one point, he uttered the words that still resonate in our minds and hearts. Let me go to the house of the Father. They were words of hope of trust in the promise of eternal life that God has made us through His Son, Jesus Christ. Around 5 p.m., as the sun approached the horizon, the first Vespers of the second Sunday of Easter, the Sunday of Divine Mercy, were recited. The reading spoke to us of the empty tomb, of the resurrection of Christ. As these words echoed in the air, the Holy Father embraced with His gaze those who were beside Him, his closest collaborators and the doctors watching over him. In the squares and streets of Rome, thousands of faithful gathered to pray and invoke the name of John Paul II. Their voices rose like a choir singing praises to the Pope. He listened to those words, those cries of love and gratitude. In front of the Holy Father's bed, on the wall, hung a painting depicting the suffering Christ bound with ropes, the exe homo. John Paul II fixed his gaze on that image as if to contemplate the mystery of the passion. His eyes, which were slowly fading, also rested on the image of the Madonna of Czestokawa, the Queen of Poland, the mother who had been close to him at every moment of his life. On a small table next to his bed, there was a photo of his parents, this photo represented his roots, his history, the source from which he had drawn strength and inspiration. John Paul II always carried in his heart the love for his family and the values transmitted by his parents. He was aware that his mission to lead the church would not have been possible without their support and their guidance along the path of faith. Around 8 p.m., as the daylight turned into a mantle of stars, Monsignor Stanislaw Zivish presided over the celebration of the Holy Mass in honor of the Sunday of Divine Mercy beside the dying Pope's bed. At his side were Cardinal Marian Jaworski, Monsignor Stanislaw Rilko, Monsignor Mieczysław Mokszycki, and Father Tadeusz Stichin. This Holy Mass was a moment of grace, an opportunity to renew trust in the gift of God's mercy. The words of the Gospel according to John resonated movingly. Jesus came, stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. These words brought comfort to the heart of John Paul II and to all those present. It was as if the Lord himself approached him in that moment of extreme weakness to assure him of his divine peace. Before the offertory, Cardinal Marian Jaworski once again administered the anointing of the sick to the Holy Father a sacrament of spiritual healing and comfort in the final stages of life. During communion, Monsignor Zivish offered him the most holy blood as viaticum, nourishment for the soul on its journey to eternity. John Paul II received these gifts with profound gratitude, aware that his earthly life was reaching its fulfillment. As time passed, his strength began to wane, in his hand, a blessed lit candle was placed, symbolizing light and hope. At 9.37 p.m., in a moment of silence and intense prayer, 
John Paul II left this earth to join God in eternal glory. All those present intoned the Te Deum, a hymn of thanksgiving to God for the extraordinary gift of the Holy Father's life and his great pontificate. With tearful eyes, everyone united in a single voice to give thanks to God. John Paul II left us a precious teaching about faith, hope, and love. His testimony of courage in the face of death reminds us that even in the most difficult trials, we must remain steadfast in our trust in God. His life was a beacon of light in the darkness, an example of how to face suffering and death with serenity and trust in the divine plan. John Paul II taught us all that death is not the end, but rather a passage to eternal life in communion with God. He lived his illness and death as an offering, a self-offering to God, and a unification with all who suffer in the world. He showed the entire world that even in suffering and weakness, we can find profound meaning and a special closeness to the crucified Christ. His decision to remain in his residence and die near the tomb of the Apostle Peter was a tangible sign of his love for the Church and his total dedication to the service of God. John Paul II left a legacy of love, compassion, and humility that continues to inspire millions of people around the world. His deep spirituality and his intimate relationship with God illuminated every moment of his life and brought hope and consolation to those who knew him and followed his pontificate. His unwavering faith and his extraordinary capacity to forgive touched the hearts of many prompting them to seek reconciliation and peace. Now, as we remember John Paul II, we must take up his teaching and carry it forward in our lives. We must learn from the example of this great preacher of the gospel and spread the joy of God's love to everyone we meet. We must live with hope, trust, and charity, knowing that death does not have the last word but is only the passage to eternal life with God. May His Spirit continue to guide and inspire us. May His testimony support our journey of faith. And may we learn from Him to live each day as a precious gift. John Paul II, pray for us and teach us to live with passion and dedication for the Kingdom of God. May God bless us all.